Once upon a time, I remember I just moved to New York and someone invited me for an event, somewhere in the land of Bushwick. The setting of this event was in a large industrial garage. When I entered, I saw that every single person was wearing something pre-owned at least three times and reinvented by each of the three previous owners. So by the time a jacket got to the fourth owner, that jacket was beyond its own fashion statement. Standing there, all I could think of was, so this is Brooklyn. <laughs> In mainstream culture, it's known that Brooklyn is where the hipsters live, everyone wears black, and it's all about counterculture. Yes, while that may be true, this culture only really applies to a quarter of Brooklyn. Brooklyn is a large borough. I mean, just look at the map. Not every inch of it is going to be hip apartments with fancy plants and Doc Martens. Just like the rest of New York, Brooklyn has diversity. And that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to break down King County, also known as Brooklyn. Welcome to Urban Caffeine. My name is Thea and you're watching a channel that talks about urbanism, public transit, and living a meaningful life in a dense city. If you like topics like these, make sure you subscribe. And while you're at it, hit that like button for the YouTube algorithm. Brooklyn, also known as King County, is one of the five boroughs of New York City. Although Queens has the largest land area, Brooklyn has the most people. And like all the other boroughs, Brooklyn is divided into neighborhoods. But know that these boundaries are not always official. These are cultural boundaries that shift over time. As we look at the lay of the land, you'll notice that just like the way Manhattan has Central Park, Brooklyn has Prospect Park. In fact, it was designed by the same person. And just like Central Park, Prospect Park hosts all these things that you can do. To the north of Brooklyn is where you'll find that hipster culture we're talking about. To the northwest has downtown Brooklyn. Between the two, these are the most gentrified areas of Brooklyn, partly because they're close to Manhattan. You'll find lots of hip neighborhoods with fancy condos and a good amount of trendy restaurants and shops. To the south are the beaches. You'll find places like Coney Island, Brighton Beach, and the Floyd Bennett Field. And the rest of Brooklyn are what suburbs would have looked like 70 years ago. The further out you go, the less access people have to the subway and the less dense neighborhoods will be. But still dense if you compare it to the suburbs we see today in the rest of the United States. So let's name all the neighborhoods. Starting in northern Brooklyn, we have Greenpoint, Williamsburg, East Williamsburg, Bedford-Stuyvesant or bed and Bushwick. I've always felt that Williamsburg is an extension of the East Village because the L easily connects the two. You'll notice it's the same type of crowd, drawn to Williamsburg's trendy restaurants and eclectic shops. And the trendiness of Williamsburg is catching on to Greenpoint. Greenpoint is a Polish community with some hipsters mixed in. As you move further into Brooklyn, especially in Bushwick, then you're really getting deep into that common mainstream idea of what Brooklyn is. Here you'll find lots of artist studios, venues for indie concerts and performances, and lots and lots of self-expression. Moving down is Northwestern Brooklyn, where you'll find Downtown Brooklyn. Downtown Brooklyn is Brooklyn's equivalent to Manhattan's Midtown and Downtown. This area has had some major economic development, and lots of corporate businesses are here. Near Downtown Brooklyn is the Brooklyn Navy Yard, which is an industrial business hub. There's also the neighborhood of Dumbo, which is short for down under the Manhattan Bridge overpass. Because it really is under the Manhattan Bridge overpass. This is one of the most pictured locations in Brooklyn and New York City. And now you know it's in Dumbo. Other neighborhoods surrounding downtown are Brooklyn Heights, the Brooklyn Waterfront, Cobble Hill, Borum Hill, Fort Greene, and Clinton Hill. These are all really nice neighborhoods to live in. Further along are Red Hook, Carroll Gardens, Gowanus, Park Slope and South Slope, and Prospect Heights. The areas closer to downtown Brooklyn are expensive for obvious reasons, which has to do with economic development. Places like Red Hook and Gowanus are a bit more industrial. In Gowanus, some large buildings have been converted to sports facilities. 
In Guanas, there's this area I found that has an indoor tennis facility, indoor soccer field, and indoor archery range. They've converted these large industrial buildings into facilities that could be used by the residents near that area. You can also find things like breweries, wineries, and distilleries. Businesses that need space. And there's also an extremely large IKEA in Red Hook. This IKEA is notable because it even has a free ferry to and from Manhattan. Buying IKEA furniture is somewhat of a rite of passage when you move to New York. If you're in this camp, comment below what furniture you bought when you first moved here. On the east side of Prospect Park is Central Brooklyn. Here you have Crown Heights, Prospect Lefferts Gardens, Windsor Terrace, Kensington, Flatbush, and East Flatbush. Central Brooklyn is where you'll find Little Caribbean, and it's Crown Heights that hosts the West Indian Day Parade. Along with Little Caribbean is Little Haiti. The majority of Central Brooklyn is residential. As mentioned, the most expensive areas of Brooklyn are in the Northwest, where there's downtown Brooklyn and also quick access to Manhattan. For some that cannot afford these areas, the next viable options are Central Brooklyn. Neighborhoods here are still accessible by the train for access to both downtown Brooklyn and Manhattan. To the southwest, we have Greenwood Heights, which has the Greenwood Cemetery. This cemetery is a popular place to just walk around and enjoy some peace and quiet. Before there were public parks, people used to go to cemeteries to enjoy some green space. And the Greenwood Cemetery has been around since the 1830s. And a lot of famous people have been buried here. Moving along are Sunset Park, Bay Ridge, Diker Heights, Fort Hamilton, Bath Beach, Bensonhurst, Mapleton, and Borough Park. Sunset Park is like the Brooklyn Navy Yard. Both have become hubs for Brooklyn-based businesses. And the major hub in Sunset Park is Industry City. If you're running out of things to do in New York and are looking for new adventures, I would say go to Industry City. They have a whole calendar of events from food markets, movie nights, to salsa dancing. Diker Heights is famous for its holiday lights at the end of the year. There are a few blocks in this neighborhood that are understatedly decked out. Some of these homes hire professionals to decorate every year. And the best part is that it's free to go. I have to admit it is a bit of a trek to get to Diker Heights if you're coming from Manhattan, especially in the winter time when it's freezing cold out. But it's worth going at least once. Just pack some hot chocolate and bundle up. Brooklyn in general has many Jewish communities scattered throughout, but in Southwest Brooklyn, in Borough Park in particular, has the largest Jewish community in New York. But something also notable about Southwest Brooklyn is that it has two Chinatowns. One is at Sunset Park and the other is at Bensonhurst. And there's a third one in Homecrest. New York has nine Chinatowns and three of them are in Brooklyn. Moving to the south end of Brooklyn, you have the beaches. There's Seagate, Coney Island, Brighton Beach, and Manhattan Beach. The beaches in Brooklyn that most people go to are Coney Island and Brighton Beach. Coney Island has the boardwalk with the carnival, Nathan's famous hot dogs, the New York Aquarium, and the Brooklyn Cyclones baseball. I don't normally go to Coney Island because the beaches there are just packed with people and I'm not that big on carnivals and roller coaster rides. But it's worth visiting at least once just so you know what Coney Island's all about. And every year in the summertime, Coney Island also has the Mermaid Parade. Brighton Beach is within a Russian neighborhood. So if you want to get some language practice in and you're learning Russian, head to Brighton Beach. For the most part, Brighton Beach is okay. Bathroom facilities are decent and it's not as packed as Coney Island. But my personal preference for beaches in New York City is the Rockaways, which is in Queens. Plum Beach and Barron Island are part of the Gateway National Recreation Area, part of the National Park Services. On Barron Island is the Floyd Bennett Field. Here you can find facilities for things like camping, outdoor archery, kayaking, and fishing. The other neighborhoods in South Brooklyn are Gravesend, Sheepshead Bay, Garriston Beach, which is more of a residential neighborhood than a beach, Homecrest, which has the third Chinatown mentioned earlier, Madison, Midwood, Marine Park, Flatlands, Mill Basin, and Bergen Beach, which is also more of a residential neighborhood despite its name. And lastly, Eastern Brooklyn has Cypress Hills, 
Brownsville, East New York, and Canarsie. And since this area of Brooklyn has less access to the subway, it's hard to get around without a car. Most of the neighborhoods are gonna look like what the 1950s suburbs were like. Very different from what you would see in the northwestern part of Brooklyn. So that's Brooklyn in a nutshell. I'm sure I glazed over a lot of information. If there's a fun fact that you would like to share about Brooklyn, comment down below. Mainstream media does depict the typical Brooklynite as hipster and or counterculturalist. But that's only a portion of Brooklyn. Remember that Brooklyn is large. It's not all hipsters that live here. Although there are a lot of hipsters, not all of Brooklyn is. With that, thank you so much for watching. And if you like this video and want to support this channel, I offer Patreon, and YouTube membership. As a thank you to members that join, I provide exclusive access to extra content where I publish mini vlogs twice a week. I talk about things as a creator and the behind the scenes of Urban Caffeine and also things that I do in New York City. So check that out at patreon.com slash urban caffeine or the join button of this channel. Again, thank you so much for watching and until the next video, happy New Yorking.